what's up make sure you like share subscribe hit the notification bell up above for future uploads and check out the links posted in the description down below to support the channel thank you so what i want to talk about today is she hulk episode one and i want to do kind of a review and a few talking points around this tv series that seem to be getting out there and are very interesting to say the very least because what they've decided to do with this show this show is already going to be a niche show and that's what marvel and indeed kevin feige seem to not understand about what they are doing with the current trajectory of the MCU. They've ended phase four prematurely. They've started phase five. And it looks like they wanted to continue on with this type of nonsense. And when you decide to make a niche show. And then you decide to bash long established characters in Captain America and the Hulk. Which the MCU has ruined over the last number of years. Like I understand now. I used to understand why edward norton stepped away from the role of the hulk but now i do i really do once the avengers started i was like oh now i get it yeah because mark ruffalo is a goofball the character of bruce banner is a goofball and the way he's been portrayed throughout the mcu has been a goofball performance after goofball performance and indeed in real life the man he's not someone i would have a conversation with to say the very least so that's not helping the situation which is you're bashing captain america in this tv series and you're also then as they're calling them the smart hulk in this tv series the soy hulk and you are making a story out of nothing in my opinion because what they've done in the last couple of tv series with the marvel universe is they've given mantles to people that are totally undeserving of it you look at captain america and the winter soldier at no point in time should sam wilson be captain america considering the fact that he took the shield from john walker stole it in a 2v1 situation against john walker you are then looking at one division one that completely forgiven for taking over an entire town and causing multiple problems there you are then looking at loki loki playing second fiddle then to a female loki you then look at what they've done with hawkeye a show that many thought was going to be about clint barton no you were wrong about that it became about Kate Bishop and Hor assuming his mantle, while at the same time telling him he wasn't that great anyway to begin with. So, this is the trajectory of the MCU, and it's happened yet again here it has with the She-Hulk, because we've got the Smart Hulk, as he's called, but he's really the Soy Hulk. He makes a couple of comments about Tony Stark, doesn't seem to care about Tony Stark, which is very fitting with what's going on. And recently there's been a conversation that's come out between John Favreau and the Russos, where they said, he didn't want Tony Stark to go in Endgame and we pushed for it. I sort of understand the Russo's as to why they did that now. Because if Tony Stark was still knocking around with this stuff going on like this. I, I'm sure they'll find some way of tearing him down. They'll do it now with Ironheart, no doubt in my mind. But the fact that a lot of people's jumping off points was the demise of Tony Stark. I think that's why you're seeing this now. This didn't pan out well in the comics and it's not going to pan out well here in the entertainment. Because you're creating a niche audience that's already not there. You're deciding to write for people that might tag along to the cinema to see these types of movies and TV shows. And now you're writing for an even smaller niche, which is women that are out there that are in happy relationships aren't watching this because they look at this and they say, that's written by someone that's completely unhappy, that's surrounded by cats. You know what I mean? And that's exactly what you see in this show. And that's why you have the image here of, uh, as I like to call her, she whore Hulk. <laughs> <laughs> So the show, anyway, it starts off, and it starts off poorly by introducing us to Jennifer Walters, and immediately they do the Deadpool shtick with her, which is breaking the far wall. Now, I know, before anybody comes onto the channel and says, well, Jen Walters, the She-Hulk does that in the comics, I know that, but would you have not saved that for a better character rather than using her here? It seems superfluous, and by the time Deadpool does enter into this universe, it's then going to be, well, who's doing it? Everyone's doing it, are they? You know what I mean? It just loses its effect in my view. And I think it's very effective when Deadpool does it. However, what they decide to do is change the origin of She-Hulk in this TV series. They start off by having a car journey between Jen and Bruce Banner. Because of course it's back to Bruce Banner because they have to get Mark Ruffalo's face on the screen. You know yourself. And they're talking about Captain America's love life. Now, the people that have written this show as has been quite evidenced by people that have written previous Marvel movies and TV shows, explicitly the Black Widow movie, when the director and indeed writer of that movie said, eh, she's the only one without superpowers. Wrong. Wrong on that one. She's not the only Avenger without superpowers. You're wrong on that. So you don't know what you're talking about. They then talk about Captain America's love life. 
So, excuse me if you will, but these are the same people that are telling you not to objectify women and see women as one thing that are now literally, and I mean literally, not in the way that these people are using it, telling you that Captain America is an object and to be objectified. It's unbelievable. Now again, this goes back to these people not looking at the earlier material like the Forced Avenger when Captain America was used by the United States of America to go around and push out how great the Americans were doing in multiple shows and he was talking to multiple women, especially when he became jacked. Let's not forget as well too, Peggy Carter was beside herself when Steve Rogers emerged as the super soldier. Like, are you telling me that you seriously think that he wasn't getting any? Are you for real here? Because that is complete and utter nonsense and he obviously had downtime in the meantime between that. But what a weird attack to make on Captain America straight off out the gate. And then the talk about Tony Stark as if, oh, you know, he made this place billionaire, it's great, you know, he said he'd come back and take her out. No sorrow, no sadness about the character of Tony Stark, no sadness about the legacy that he's at to leaving. And what they, he could have done potentially. Like, it's just like, uh, throw away, doesn't really matter. So that's how the show starts. And instead of using the original She-Hulk origin, which is a much better origin than what they used. So what they used in this show was, there was a car crash because a Sicarian ship drove in front of the car of Jennifer Walters that she was driving. Of course, then women drivers, then it doesn't really give you a great indication. Also, within this TV series as well, too, the answer, the age-old question, are women funny? Anyway, car crash happens and Bruce's blood gets into Jennifer's cuts on her arms and she is then obviously going to become a Hulk. This is removed from what they do in the comics, which is, in the comics... Jennifer is representing someone that is squealing on the mob. And what the mob decide to do is, because they know that the case against them isn't good, they decide to attack Jennifer. Jennifer is very badly injured and Bruce Banner fights them off and has to then keep his control to not become the Hulk so he can save his cousin and bring her to his lab so he can give her a blood transfusion which inevitably then turns her into the She-Hulk. It's a needs must situation. Instead, it's played off for laughs and a goof and Jennifer Walters actually pulls Bruce Banner out of the wreckage of this car. It's a complete mess. Absolute mess. She then makes her way to a bar as she becomes She-Hulk and of course then there's men that are talking to her after she's after meeting women there that give her some weird looking outfits and she walks outside and hulks out then because men are asking her where she's going, who she's going with and she's all right. It's bizarre stuff anyway. Then makes its way into a crescendo of this type of nonsense here and this is actually these are actually quotes here and fair play to ifunny.com for this here compiling actual quotes from the show and putting them into here she says here's the thing bruce i'm great at controlling my anger i do it all the time when i'm cat called in the street now i'm going to be honest with you here on this one guys okay they're talking about casting alison brie in this role i could see that I could see her being catcalled. I couldn't see this chick being catcalled. Really couldn't. You know what I mean? Industry incompetent men explain my own area of expertise to me. That's clearly because you obviously come off as someone that doesn't understand what you're doing. You know what I mean? So, again, this is all anti-men, as you know. And she's explained this to the Hulk. <laughs> this fella that's had to been chased around by the United States military. Had to abscond. Had to go to Brazil and hide out. Had to leave the love of his life. Awful life that he's had to lead. And this rage monster as well too. It's so poorly written the Hulk. That's why it's so convoluted as to what they're doing with it now. They don't know what to be doing. Because they've written it so poorly. Again, against what Edward Norton would have done. You see. All traces itself back to what he was trying to do. So anyway, she moves on then and says, I do it pretty much every day because if I don't, I'll get called emotional or difficult or I might just literally get murdered. <laughs> she's very emotional in this show and she's very difficult indeed because she doesn't want to listen to Bruce Banner who has had the Hulk persona now for, as he said there, over 10 years. He's been wrestling with it for about 15. And she's like, I oh, know, I don't want to know about that. I just want to go off and do my own thing. I'm, I'm, she actually then shows that she's difficult and emotional by saying... Hey, I don't want any of your advice on me over now here and I'm going back to whatever I'm doing here. You know what I mean? And then she's talking about are literally getting murdered. Like, this show is not self-aware insofar as it doesn't know the rates of men being taken out in the world, both in situations like that and indeed in self-deletions. Like, men are very much so winning the game there in people being taken out and also then taking themselves out. So, this type of nonsense is perpetuated by people like this here. I think her name is Jessica Gow. Now, as I said there earlier on, 
you've seen a couple of interviews i'm sure probably yourself with the cast and stuff like that this is the type of person writing this show this isn't an uber attractive woman um writing tv series for women or anything like that this is a woman here that clearly has an awful lot of problems herself and is writing this sort of stuff about being catcalled which i'm sure she's probably not gotten before it's probably been the chick beside you let's be honest with you that's walking down the street and you're assuming it's you you always get those type of people out there oh is it me you're whistling that no 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 it's you it's the woman behind you you move out of the way there out 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 there fiona <laughs> that's what people are calling this about they fiona out shrek so anyway you're getting to see this sort of stuff here and the ultimate reaction to this type of writing is this so they thought that men were going to go like this and say are we the baddies and then you have the dennis character here from it's always only been like <laughs> you've done <laughs> so this is she hulk episode one in a nutshell and this exchange really says something and indeed then there's another one as well too where her and bruce banner's hulk have a fight and she beats bruce banner's hulk of course she's been the hulk what two days two weeks or whatever it is at this stage is able to super clap him into submission this is a fella that had sonic weapons used on him there in the incredible hulk if it's supposed to be the same one at this stage of the game i'd rather than just distance himself from incredible hulk altogether because that's a very good movie and i think when you look at the current junk that you're being given you look at the incredible hulk and say that's a movie that has an awful lot to say it really does look at the incredible hulk again and look at through a new lens specifically from the last two years they're talking about the government giving Banner something that the government feels like around Banner now because they've given him something that's now running through him. And then Banner saying, no, I don't want that to do it. And he's looking for his own autonomy. A lot to be said about that type of movie, I have to say. But you're not seeing it in any of this type of schlock now that you're being thrown at now. Then it ends with what can only be described as a CW-esque ending. Titania bursts through the doors of the court and she after she comes through a wall by the way i should say not the doors but after she actually comes through a wall so obviously a super powered character she then has difficulty with two security guards so they're wrestling with her in the background while jennifer is telling her friend i like this outfit i don't want to rip it up and your woman's like yeah go on go on go on that woman's just burst through a wall and she's wrestling with two guards to find it difficult with her so again like as i said cw sort of stuff the woman who plays titania uh very nice very nice indeed and the only one i suppose in this show that you could look at and say yeah 100 percent. and that's what i'm saying to you about casting as well too if you had this type of attitude from someone like alison brie you might understand it would i still understand it no because i'd be like that's ridiculous anyway you should be delighted with people whistling and looking at you and being attracted to you i mean this is being perceived by people like this as being offensive you see the reason why this is being perceived as being offensive is because it's not happening for this woman and she's witnessing it happening to her friends and family maybe and other people in her life that are being looked at and are being talked to and she's just been left on the side. You know what I mean? You're seeing a bitter type of writing here from this episode indeed. And it's going to continue because they have Emil Blonsky, uh, Abomination, that's played by Tim Roth here in this series. He's going to be in subsequent episodes. And they've also somehow wheels charity cox's daredevil into this tv series now i have said it already in my phase five thoughts in that they're going to do loads more of these crossovers with characters that you do like into shows and movies that you won't like so most people are going to watch this show to see when matt murdoch and daredevil turns up the thing is that this this woman has already said that the Daredevil you already know from the Netflix TV series isn't going to be the same Daredevil that's going to be in this TV series. You're going to be a lively, jovial character. I don't know about you, but I can see them making Matt Murdock Daredevil out to be a complete and utter clown in this show. And that's how we're going to be introduced. And if you think that I'm being unfair when I say that, here's what they've done in this show already. They've clowned Captain America. They've told you not to be really interested or invested in the past of tony stark they've made a soy hulk you think that they won't do that to daredevil they've already done negative things to kingpin in the hawkeye tv series so i'm telling you they're doing that to a-list characters what would be perceived as a-list characters in the mcu they will not mind doing it to anybody so when daredevil gets it and he eventually will this is the thing as i said daredevil born again i'm looking forward to it but if this is the first appearance of the character in this and it goes badly, it's in serious trouble. The MCO is on the decline. It's on its way out. 
There's no surprise in my mind when you're seeing some of the people involved in the MCU crying out about what David Zaslav is doing at Warner Brothers Discovery because the era of this woke stuff is coming to an end at Warner Brothers and Discovery and how long will it be before other places look around and go we should be doing the same because we're absolutely losing money here hand over fist so anyway I'm glad to see so many people speaking out about this because this is a bad show it's badly acted badly written badly directed and the characters are just very poor in this I mean the Tatiana uh, was our Titania character Tatiana is the girl that plays Jennifer Walters but the Titania character Jamil Jamila she even looks ridiculous like I mean <laughs> <laughs> you haven't even tried it. So anyway, I'm going to leave the re review there. Make sure you like, share, subscribe. Hit the notification bell up above for future uploads. Check out the links posted in the description. Download support channel. And talk to you there. Look.